Okay, first of all, let's give credit where credit is due. I found another example from Mark Rossi on Godwise Info. The second video is the one that concerns me. Well, I wouldn't uh, normally I wouldn't bother with me make with making this video, but uh, I tried to reproduce it in Blender and I got stuck in a certain point. So consider this video a quick tip on the bend modifier. As for the rest of the video, you can take my advice, you can follow this very skilled man, you'll see how fast he is working, and choose your approach. So, let's go. The point of this exercise is to create a sort of a pillar, a marble pillar. In order to demonstrate what I was talking about, <coughs> the use of the bend modifier in Blender, which always confused me up until now, I will deliberately mess up the orientation of this sphere. So I will rotate it on the Y axis in object mode, not edit mode, because I want its axis to flip. I want the Z to look on the global X uh, axis, not as it was before. So, you'll see why I'm doing this later on. Let's remove any vertices that we don't need. We're left with this nice quarter of a sphere. Let's be the start. Let's dissolve these edges. And create one that we like. Extrude on the Z. How much? Well, let me see if I can demonstrate this easily. If not, well, haven't really used, and this is probably not the time to look for it. A screencast key. No, I'm sorry. The grease pencil. Yeah, that's it. So. Oh, come on. Yeah, and as I said, it's probably not the time to do it. Okay. But I need this edge to be pretty much as long as this edge so that we have a nice continuity along the edges. And the key thing in modeling this. Well, let's see, just so you know what we're doing here. We're going to make this into a nice round shape. We want the back to be as round as possible. And how we're going to do that? We're going to give it some space. Right? Yeah, we're going to want some quads here that are more or less equal in space in the space they, they take up so is this good enough? Uh, it's slightly pinching so maybe even Something like that, perhaps. So, uh, it looks good enough for my purposes, and I'm not going to elaborate on this any further. Yeah? Okay. Maybe then drag this 
a little lower. As for the pinching part, well, this is how to do it. We're going to try and have a nice curvature here. Well, this is much, much better, I think. You can try for yourselves. It's not perfect. I, I, I can still see it pinching somewhere. Just can't place it. But it's enough for the moment. So let's go on to the rest of our example. Grab these edges. Let's do it again. Good. Now let's create an array modifier. Give it uh, 1.2 so that they're not exactly touching each other. And the count of three. Apply. Well, move the subsurface modifier down. Apply the array modifier. And let's work on these. No. Oh, come on. I want to bridge this. And slice it in the middle. Bridge this. Do the same thing. And slice in the middle. Then get rid of everything I don't need. I don't need the left and the right parts. I want to be left with this one that I can repeat as much as I like. Yeah, scale on the Z axis by zero, so you can see that. Scaled for amount of zero along the Z axis. And uh, now let's add two definition loops. Select the polygon loop. Press O to move outside in the inset tool while we are using the inset tool. This creates a redundant loop that we're going to delete pretty soon. What we're interested in is these two definition loops, this one and this one. These will make our mesh sharp. And this one destroys the smoothness inside. It was created by the inset tool, like I said, so takes a hike. Good. So now I have a shape that we can repeat using an array modifier, another array modifier. Say 20 times on the y axis. Merge this is. Uh, well, this one doesn't really matter here because. Okay, this is it. We're, we want to bend this piece so that it folds on itself and ends right up here again. How we do that? We add a simple deform modifier. Let's move this. Let's move this upper surface modifier again to be the final modifier. So <coughs> we have in order the array modifier, the simple deform modifier, and the subsurface modifier. On the simple modifier, we have a number of options: twist, which we don't care for right now; bend, which is our choice; tap and stretch. Each one does a different thing. It doesn't really matter. I don't want to explain everything right now. We want a 360 degree turn and you can see this marvelous thing which doesn't look at all like a pillar well uh, if you look at the wiki page of the simple deform modifier you will see that it only deforms bends, twists, uh, tappers, whatever on the z-axis on which is very cumbersome I, will, I was always frustrated with the uh, 
with this limit in options why couldn't they add for example a x y z tick boxes like in every other same modifier well you will see that it doesn't really matter and things are quite simple but they involve a, an extra step like with the array modifier okay well, let me explain myself <coughs> let's deactivate the array modifier for the moment that one too we want the pillar to go all around itself and end at this this very edge so that we can then merge the doubles and get a, a nice whole round cylinder so we want a helper object we want to move the cursor to the selected edge you go to object mode yeah yeah ignore that uh, add the helper empty here I'm adding a, an arrows empty because I want to see the orientation you can see that the orientation of this empty is Z on top Y and X and this is very useful you'll see why it's that okay and this okay oh yeah that's the uh, that's the orientation. I, will, I, will, I don't need to see it anymore any longer, so I'll delete. I delete the display of the axis for my sphere object, the original sphere object. I only care about this empty, which happens to be just where I want it, just on this edge. And I only care about one dimension of this edge, the Z dimension. You'll see what I mean right now. So. I go to the array modifier, the, the simple deform modifier, sorry. And I use the empty as an origin. You will see that <coughs> the empty is not only used as an origin, but also uh, not uh, only as a position origin, but also as an orientation origin. What do I mean by that? That mm, if I move the empty, it will affect the simple deform modifier based on the start of the deform but it also if I rotate it and this is the most important part it will affect the, 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 the modifier in the same way it will do what I want it to do so I want the z-axis to be where it is uh, but I want these other two axes to behave differently so I want to rotate 90 degrees so the z-axis remains right where we want them to the top but the other two axes they define what I want if I had rotated minus 90 degrees see that oh come on minus help me out here well maybe I'm not <coughs> yeah that's more like it I would have had this result the exact opposite oh so let's now rotate what Ninety degrees or uh, hundred and eighty degrees on the z axis. Oh, come on, hundred and eighty. Okay. Let's match the array modifier. Smash the simple deform modifier. Going to edit mode, we know that the edges coincide. No, we don't want to move anything anymore. Okay. Remove. Good. 
Oh, let's complete the pillar. Well, we can use <coughs> that empty again because it's selected the empty to cursor, the selection to cursor, so we can use it as a, as a guide to a second modifier, which is the mirror modifier. Right? That on the Z axis. And apply. <clears throat> okay. So that's it. I hope you learned something from this quick tip. I may explore one of his examples in a later video, so stay tuned and feel free to comment. Thanks, bye bye.